Hello everyone, good morning. Uh, as I promised a few days ago and yesterday also, I will do a quick guide about basic options of that device, which is Arcos, uh, Retroarch and PPSS PP. I will show you how to use it, basic option, because people don't know how to just use this ones. Okay, from beginning, what we're gonna do, I'm gonna show you just the basic on the main menu which you have to press start then you go in there you've got display settings and info a is like go next b is like back yeah you've got brightness on the top which then you can just change it on the right on the left okay ue settings if you need to change theme if you want to change theme uh, different looks front end you have to go here then click a on the top and you've got three a uh, few different teams in this point I've got five different yeah for example some switch when you confirm go back emulation station it just restart everything as you see is different now yeah okay that's how it looks for example that's one that's how we change in the teams I will go back I start again to the main menu, UI settings, team, and I will come back to my one. Oh, that's another one. <laughs> okay, not that one. Okay. I think it was Ness. Yeah? Yeah, it, it is my one. Okay. That's what we that's what we've got here, yeah? You're gonna have a plenty of options which one probably you're never gonna use it we're not gonna talk about that okay we go back we're going to emulator settings okay what's that for uh, all of the emulators got as default emulator auto when you go in there you've got few different emulators retroarch retroarch 32 standalone is uh, as default right from the beginning you've got auto but some maybe games not working if for example your game or from nintendo super famicom not working at all just go there click emulator again and change for some of these ones yeah not auto maybe Mad nothing, some automatically or retro 32 or that one just try it some games just need to change that one for example for me as i've got saturn saturn working for me perfect on emulator standalone bios mostly some of them standalone no bios when you've got retro arch or retro run is working slow the saturn is working very slow for me that's why i've got this standalone um, yabasanashi yeah, it's something like that. And this working absolutely good for that particular device. Yeah, the other stuff I've got auto. But as I'm saying, if you got problem with something, PlayStation, for example, you can change for standalone duck station or retroage or retroage normal or 32. Yeah, just check it, check it. Some games working better when you just put this manually. Okay, this is emulator settings. Remember, and you just uh, need to find the system which one you want to change. Okay, as you see, my Arcos is from 29th of September 2023. Why I didn't put the newest one? Because that one working really good for me, stable. I heard about the newest one. Some people have a problem with PlayStation 1, for example, which one I haven't got. And that's why I, I use that one and I'm not changing it. Another thing is Wi-Fi. That is my one. That's what I've got. And my Wi working absolutely perfect for that uh, console yeah how are we gonna connect it I will show you that okay by uh, OTG port you need this adapter I will put the link on the description also you can buy it okay you're supposed to hear the sound it was for a second okay then go to option a you need to go down to Wi-Fi when once you click this one you see oh it's nothing here 
Of course, it's nothing because you have to add it. How to add it? You have to click R1, then you went down here. Yeah. Okay. Uh, once you got plus, click A, and you've got plenty of different. Okay, this is my one. Enter Wi Fi password. I'm not gonna show you, of course. Okay, so once we did the password manually, just click here. And it's supposed to connect it. It's showing us, please wait. It's trying to connect with with the with my Wi-Fi. Okay, seems like you're working. Okay, we'll see. As you see, there's an option just to deactivate. It means it's activate. We're going back. Okay. And press the start button. And Wi-Fi is up. Wi-Fi is up. I'm not gonna lie, I've done this first time. Uh, it showed me is Wi-Fi down. Then I put, the, I just delete everything. Then I put the password again, and it just start working properly. Uh, okay, it's the proof. I'm gonna show you. I put the scraper on. Okay, games system selected. Okay, maybe Atari 800. Then start. It's working now. See? Okay, this means Wi-Fi is working. Now, guys, we're going back, uh, going now to PlayStation games, and I will show you PPSSPP how to set up everything. To go to PPSSPP options, you need to press the joystick. Yeah, click that on. Then you've got that PPS SPP emulator, which is showing you everything here. We're going to settings now. Wrong button, B. <laughs> We're going to settings. And on the right side is this what is <coughs> interesting for you. Uh, rendering resolution. You've got few options. Mostly in that device, you're gonna use times one. I'm not using auto because sometimes it's just speed it up, slowing down, speed it up, slowing down. The best way is just put straight away, just times one. Okay, I used to have full synchronization. Just turn this off as this device is not powerful enough. Then, uh, that's important things. Frame skipping, yeah? Uh, just when you've got not demanding games, you can put the off and auto uh, frame skip off also but if you see your game is start slowing down and the fps is going down just click the auto frame skip and frame skip in times one if it's not enough try times two for example yeah and you will see if it's good enough for that i used to use maximum times three but this is uh, really demanding games like GTA, uh, but I'm not gonna lie you, that's quite choppy. That normally maximum up to two. If the game is still choppy, just that's not the game for that one. I didn't change anything here. Uh, speed hacks off everything. I just got that one and curves quality low. Why? Because as I say, this device is not powerful enough to just upscale many things. Hardware transform, software skinning. I live in that like that and I don't have a problem. Uh, upscale type. Uh, sometimes is different if you put BRZ and hybrid and bcubic. Uh, sometimes it's moving by this one, sometimes it's moving by this one. It depends on the game. It's not uh, one the same story for every single game. Mostly I've got that one and it's working fine, but sometimes I'm ch changing for BRZ and yeah, upscale level. I never put the upscale at all because it's just making games harder to emulate and it's not for that chipset. Just turn this off and your game gonna be faster for 100%. Uh, the same is uh, with that filtering. We don't need this here. Just put this off. 
texture filtering auto but anisotropic filtering just put this off it's not for that device guys if people ask me about show fps counter how where it is is exactly on the bottom of that graphic options you can turn on or turn off and that's it now uh, you go and back back a okay we want to save save state we are on that uh, moment now go to save state here click b and wait for a second is supposed to save it state was saved okay now we will see if it's working yeah okay, go back by the joystick go to the left side load state and wait a second you see it just come back to the situation which one we we save it before that's how it is you go in that safe go safe state click b and it's safe if you wanna change controls go to control control mapping then you've got all different buttons and you can just change it if you if you want i'm not changing this one once i messed up and I had hard to get back because I delete everything and this is completely not working after that. That's why I'm just not changing. Everything is fine for me. Go back. Okay. I had the audio issue. When you go to audio. And what has happened to me? I had a few times when my uh, sound wasn't work for the games. And I said, what's going on? Is enable sound looks like okay but for some reason global volume was zero yeah just when you had the situation when your pps spp just haven't got the uh, sound just go here to that option and change for global volume 10 that's what i that's what i had just remember about that guys and i'm gonna show you in real life how it is working yeah we've got now 30 fps now we go into settings, rendering resolution times two, for example. No frame skipped. And this game is working still fine. Oh, but you see that. Unplayable now. We know we need to change something. Bang, we go in here. Okay, settings. Rendering resolution, one, go back, continue. Wait a second. Okay, and now we can find. Oh, we know it's not perfect. We're going back. Sorry for that buttons. I always using that one as confirm, but the B is confirmed in that situation in PPS SPP. Okay, we've got still choppy out of frame skip times one. Going back. Continue. And now should be okay. Yeah. All fine. 28, 30 FPS. That's how it's working, guys. Okay. That's it. Now we're going to retroarch. Okay, as I put scraper before, it's still working, as you see. That's why I say Wi-Fi was working even I was playing PSP and was scraping. This is okay. Okay, for example, PlayStation game. What we do? Something easy. Okay, Capcom. All right, next one. Okay, as we see, we've got the game now. Everything fine. Select an X. Is remember the option which one I've been last time, yeah? When you're gonna go to quick menu is a save state a save slot number one save state okay saving states as you see you've got now okay we're gonna play for just a second okay all right i want to go back and now just do load state select x again then just go down to load state. We've got save slot already one like was before. And we are the same situation. Which one we've done save slide. Now it's working. It's, it's, it's pretty easy. It's pretty easy. Okay, next options. Yeah. 
we're going back. You've got core options here. You're going to core options. Then you've got few different one. Input, audio, video. Uh, you can do frame skip, but I don't have reason to do in PS1, for example. Maybe somewhere you will find they need to be done, but here you don't need to do. It's something which one really can help you. Uh, if you don't know for what is any option, for example, we go in here, what is enhanced resolution? If you click select, you've got all explanation on the screen for what is that option. Going back, another option. If you're not sure, you can read anything and it's just showing you exactly what we're using for that option. You see that? Everywhere is that explanation, which is really nice function because if you don't understand something, you click select and you've got everything now. You've got the option like on-screen overlays. It's just changing the looks of your screen. For example, okay, we go in there, display overlay. We turn on, overlay preset, what we've got. We're going back to parent directory, like CRT bezels, horizontal. I've done it. Select X to come back. And you see what is that? Like CRT TV. Okay, we're going back again. Then we change for something different. And you see, <coughs> it's a lot of options, a lot of different options to look the screen different. I <laughs> some words, <laughs> yeah. Okay, this is up to you if you want to do or not. I just, I'm not gonna lie to you. I just like original ones and that's it. That's how I, that's how I'm using it. But if you like overlays, yeah, you can use it down there. If you are on the main screen, uh, quick menu, if you wanna put frame per second on your screen, what you need to do, just go back. You are now on Arcos menu, the main menu, yeah? Go down to settings. Next, user interface, next. On-screen display, next. On-screen notification, next. Notification visibility. Then you've got display frame rate and change it. Straight away, the system will show you that FPS. Yeah? 60 here, as I say. Okay, you can just do that one. If you don't want, just click back again and it's off. As you see, that's Red Rush have plenty of different, different, different options. And like I'm saying, mostly I'm not using at all because it doesn't make any sense if the game's working smooth. Another option, which one you can use it if you don't like controls, for example, you go into controls, then next, go down to port one controls. Then next, and you can change everything here. As you see, is every single control, which one we've got, the joystick, buttons, uh, and everything you can change by yourself if you don't like something in particular emulator. If you got situation, then your game have two free discs, for example. Some some games are have this one. You can, because I saw it, it doesn't recognize me second disc straight away. Uh, during the game, you've got this control, you go in there, then load new disc and you can put that second disc, which one you need. Exactly, you've got some games, then you go in for second disc and yeah, that's how it's working. You can do screen strategy ones also. <laughs> As you see, I had screenshot now on my card. <laughs> okay, another option. As you see, I've got some Game Boy borders. Is shaders again we go back then you've got on the bottom of quick menu shaders here then load go to shaders GLSL directory and you've got plenty of different shaders which one you can use it like the border one which one I use it that one as you see we've got Game Boy Advance now <laughs> 
Okay. All right, that's it. Scraper is finished. My Atari 800 hasn't got any graphics now, as you see. This scraper took it, and yeah, my Wi-Fi working. Okay, I'm gonna unplug it. I don't need this. We're going to another, to another system, which is Saturn, for example. Uh, Saturn, as I said, I'm using. Okay, I'm using standalone version. For example, okay, we've got that one. We're going to options, configuration, resolution, for example, times two. Okay, still working. We will push it more. Times four. Oh, it's slowing down now. It looks better, but it's slowing down. Okay, that's how it's working. Uh, save state. No save state. Slot number one. <coughs> okay. Going back. Load state. I've got two here, as you see. Choose which one you want. Bank working all fine. That's about Sega Saturn, is not much. You can just show and hide FPS as you see here on option. You've got show, hide FPS, it's hiding now. Then I turn on now, working fine. And that's it. You want to go out from the game. You have to go by exit and it's coming back to uh, my menu and just to show you it depends of the emulator retroarch have different some different options this is for example snes we ganda we've got these core options and as you see it's different completely different than was on the Previous retroarch options in in PlayStation One, yeah, it depends of the console. The core option is different because it's different emulator. But when you go back to Arcos, is everything the same here? Like was it before? We're going to retroarch, going back to my menu settings video. Then you've got second one, scaling. And you can change aspect ratio here for which one you want. As you see. Whoa. <laughs> okay. Some uh, emulators can have some bezels. You can change this one, just stretch up to full screen if you want. Of course, if you want. Another useful information here is when you got different card for in my example, I've got three different cards. When I put it here, it doesn't recognize me straight away. It doesn't show in me games. What I have to do first, I have to leave that card here, then go to advanced. At the bottom is switch to mine SD for ROMs. Click that one. What the system doing? It just switching your games from that card to the mine one. I haven't got any here. I haven't got any. But in that moment, what you can do, you can put your new card here, go back to options again, advanced, switch to SD2 for ROMs, and system will find the games for new card. That's how it's working. When you've got jealous, you just punk and it's working. But when you've got this one, no, you have to switch to this card, then go back to the new card again. That's how it's gonna work. That's why you see it just restarting everything, configurations, and yeah, and it's working now. Of course, I left that card here, but this is just like an example, yeah? I think it's everything for today. It took me quite long anyway. Most emulators guys you don't need to change anything to work fine the only thing what you need to do update your system to that version which one i'm showing here 
That's the basic stuff. Don't use the old one because you cannot compare with my performance. Yeah, originally you've got from April 2022. That one is stable version from the end of September. And trust me, the difference is absolutely massive. The beginning of that uh, device which one I had, I just uh, make a video about PSP games. Then I done again after updated. And for example, Initial D, it was working 15 FPS. And I update this system for my one is working on 30 FPS in exactly the same setups. Okay, that's the answer why you have to update it. Okay, thank you very much for your attention, guys. And have a good day for everyone. See you next time.